let's begin then by breaking Latin American society into its several component groups. And we can begin with those who were born in European, Iberians, or Spanish and Portuguese born people. Who were they? Most likely merchants, would be aristocrats, um, people who resented them and thought that they were showed favorable treatment by the king, referred to them as chapeton or gatupin. They held a disproportionate amount of the wealth, and they could be found in the terraza, or the trace, the exclusively Spanish-occupied town centers in colonial Latin America. Native American people and mixed-race people were not even allowed in La Terraza after nightfall. Now, the Spaniards and the Portuguese, people who were born in those countries, that is, were generally favored by the Spanish crown and put in almost all official positions, especially after the Bourbon reforms in an attempt to make the colonies more subservient as well as more profitable. They were considered more loyal if they were born in Spain or in the case of Portugal in Portugal. So, in order to tighten control over the empire, the Iberian kings would generally favor those who were of European birth. Now, below them, on the social pyramid, were Americanos, or Creoles. What, what are Creoles? They were people who were of purely European descent, whose parents, grandparents, or great-great-grandparents were born in Spain or Portugal, but were only of Spanish or Portuguese descent. And generally, they affirmed their shared European heritage in opposition to Africans, Indians, and the mixed bloods who inhabited the castes below them. Creoles would only slowly long for popular sovereignty. So long as they were preferred, as they were given preferential treatment, they did not particularly complain about their position. But once Europeans started to have preferred treatment over the Creoles, they began to long slowly but surely to rule themselves. Um, but even at the end of the revolution, the Creoles were never convinced of popular democracy because they looked below themselves in the social hierarchy, saw the many people of the Costas or African or Native American blood, and feared that they would try to um, supersede them. Um, in some ways, they did share more with the people below them culturally. After all, Indian people, African people, and mixed-race people who inhabited the same colonies as they did probably shared more culturally with the Creoles than the Creoles did with the Spaniards. The Europeans, after all, lived an ocean away. But nevertheless, they generally reaffirmed their whiteness um, similar to the Europeans who also had inhabited the colonies but in much smaller numbers than the Creoles who were of European descent but born in the Americas. Now below them could be found the Costas. Costas were people of mixed blood who didn't really have a place in colonial society. In fact, they weren't supposed to exist at all. The Spanish crown had always tried to keep white and Native American and African people separated, but of course they did procreate and mix both biologically as well as culturally. And this group of mixed blood people, part Indian, part Spanish, part African, was growing very quickly by the time of independence. But they were not treated very well. They were routinely denied certain privileges and they were considered to be of low birth. But by 1800, this, gr this group of mixed race people was by far the fastest growing segment in Latin American society. Now, uh, apart from them is our next category, Indians, Indios, or Native Americans, who were protected by the crown, in fact, but did have to pay a tribute tax to the crown in exchange for that protection. But Native Americans generally did not resist the crown because the, the King of Spain, the Spanish colonial administrators, were pretty skillful at playing rivalries between different group, ethnic groups off against one another. And usually the Native Americans, their biggest problem was not with the Spanish, who lived on the other side of the ocean, but rather with the Creoles, who were the landowners and who were constantly encroaching upon Native American land. And most grievances against Creoles or Europeans that Indians had against them were heard through the colonial courts provided by the colonial um, institutions. 
Now, most Native Americans were relatively isolated. They were subsistence farmers or peasants. They had little interest in trade or wage labor or joining Spanish or Creole society. And even though the Reparto de Miento lived on in some form throughout much of Latin America, which forced Native Americans to give up their labor on a semi-regular basis, the idea was that they they were of a different republic, subservient to the crown, but independent of both the Spanish as well as the Creoles. The Native Americans who became farmers or peasants generally were from the sedentary groups of Native Americans who were encountered by the Spanish upon the conquest out on the frontiers, in the far north of New Spain, for instance, or in the far south of uh, the Vice Royalty de Rio de la Plata, you would find Native Americans who, for all intents and purposes, were independent and autonomous of the Spanish. For example, if you go up north into what is today Arizona, New Mexico, Chihuahua, Coahuila, you would find the Comanches and the Apaches, who really were completely independent of Spanish rule. Um, down And on the other side of the American continent, in Chile, you could find the Mapuche, or the Araguano, who could never be subjected by the Incas before the Spanish arrived, and after the Spanish arrived, they could not be subje subjugated by the Spanish either. At the bottom of the scale were the African-descended people, most of whom had been brought over, stolen from Africa, and brought to the Americas as enslaved people. Eventually, their descendants, or even themselves, they might be freed, but they still occupied a low rung on the caste system. Now, the proportion of African-descended people in Latin America had grown significantly, particularly as the Indian population declined because of smallpox. African people were used as labor in the sugar belts and in the mines, and even in poorer areas without access to African slavery, they could occasionally be found. But areas on the frontier that did not have a steady supply of African enslaved people coming in, they continued to enslave Native Americans, even though this was actually illegal. People of African descent were brought over typically as enslaved people. But unlike in the United States, in Latin America, and this is an important thing to remember, people of African descent were much more likely to earn their freedom. In any case, we see here that there is a hierarchy that existed in Latin America that can be generally imagined as a pyramid with the Spanish and the Portuguese, people who were born in Europe on top. Below them, the Americanos or the Creoles, people who were of purely European descent, but who were born in the Americas. Under them could be found the Castas, people of mixed blood, who did not really even have a place in colonial society, and in fact whose existence was really an accident of colonization, transculturation, intermixture, and mestizaje, which um, the Spaniards had not really anticipated upon colonizing the New World. And on the lowest rungs were, of course, the Native Americans and people of African descent and this was the caste system in latin america but don't think that it was all that rigid there was a lot of room for mobility much more so than in the anglo colonies people of native american or even african birth could climb their way up through the social hierarchy through marriage that was one way to climb up through the hierarchy um, through having a skill which was much in demand, so many people of mixed race would move to the cities and ply their artisanal skills in the cities. And since those skills were so in demand, they would be able to move up through the ranks of society. But at the very top did sit the Spanish and the Americanos or the Creoles who blocked ascension by the lower orders in the Latin American colonial caste system.